because the more consciousness we have, the more um, we, we make different decisions. And when we make different decisions, right, we shift certain um, the axis of humanity. It's not about no. that. It's not about taking my personal responsibility and giving it to a planet because that's victimization. Yeah. But it's about yeah. understanding the context through which you're operating in and understanding that, yeah, you are a speck in the universe and there's so much more that's happening than, than you. And similar to how you can be in a country that's having like some kind of upheaval or, or is having a certain thing that's happening in that country. It's not about you necessarily. You just happen to be part of a system I remember all the questions you used to ask me. I was like, oh, I get it. Because I used to ask her the same questions. <laughs> I had the same questions. Because it was like, I'm very much like you. Like, okay, just give me, tell me what to do. Write it down and I'll do it. And I was like, doesn't work that way. Like, it doesn't work that way. So. Welcome to It's Not What You Think, the podcast that takes you on a transformative journey to rewrite your story of greatness and reawaken your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Celine DaCosta a subconscious mind expert, master coach, and believer in the limitless power and magic that lives within all of us. My intention in this podcast is to propel you into your next level of success so that you are free to create the life that your heart most desires. Through deep, actionable insights, personal stories, and world-class guests, I'll provide you with the tools, strategies, and resources you need to unlock the fullest expression of who you're meant to be in this lifetime so that you can consciously design a reality that is beyond what you could have ever dreamed of. Join me on this journey to personal growth and evolution, and let's live our lives in accordance with our highest soul's calling. This podcast is your weekly check-in to help this path become more simple, obtainable, and fun. Thank you for tuning in today, and now let's dive in. Hello, hello, soul fam. I am here today with a beautiful soul, consciousness guide, and soul astrologer, Danielle Page, and also a very good friend of mine. And I have a story to share with you about Danielle, but before I do, Danielle, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what it is that you do and what it is that you love to do? Oh, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me on. And I just want to say I love you so much. Like you just, you're adorable. You're smart. You're just, you're amazing. You're doing all the things all the time. And I'm just inspired by you. So I love you dearly. <laughs> but that being said, let's go into me now. Okay. So I am, like you said, a soul astrologer, consciousness guide. I help people understand themselves on a multidimensional level. So all the things that were never taught in school about energy, about consciousness, about awakening, I am here to help humanity expand and evolve and move to higher state of consciousness so that we don't we don't go through all the shit shows that we've been going through. So that is what I do. And we have fun while doing it. Definitely. <laughs> I never know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's perfect because I feel, I already can already feel that today's episode is really going to showcase and display that one because I oh, yeah. am on your train, lady. The whole, yeah, it can be a shit show, but let's have fun while we're at it. I'm on that train. So same yeah. station. Um, yes. So Danielle, before we dive into your amazing wisdom, I wanted to share how, the story of how I met Danielle. And those of you listening in may know may have noticed that most of my guests that I bring on the show I actually somehow met personally in a fun and interesting way. And so um, with Danielle, I actually met her in 2018. So that was about five years ago. And I remember there was a, there was a moment, and Danielle, I'm going to give you a chance. I know you, when we were talking about it offline, you were like, but I never do that. So I'm going to give you a chance to be in yourself when I want to share this. So just so you guys know, she never does this. But um, I was on my Instagram, and I remember seeing you know a comment on my Instagram that said it, it was some kind of meaningful post of some sort. And Danielle sends like puts a comment up and says, I had a dream with you last night. And, um, you know, message me because I want to share more about this. And so I remember like my at first glance, I'm like, okay, this lady's an astrologer. What is she trying to do? Like, give me some kind of reading and then trick me into like a PayPal payment or something like that. But, you know, I went in with my intuition. <laughs> yeah, yes, Danielle. <laughs> she never does this. Okay. <laughs> so I tuned in with my well, intuition. Never. I definitely know of one other person that had a dream about that I did this. So we can't say never, but I'm definitely just an FYI before we go on. I'm not sliding into your DMs asking to give you a reading because those are fake accounts. Yeah, yeah so let's exactly. Don't be pricked by fake accounts just because of this no. episode. Because this is this was this is just a unique 
event. So, um, so intuitively I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm just going to message her. I just feel like I should. And long story short, Danielle messages me and immediately like super warm, we hit it off and she offered me one of her astrology readings. And for whatever reason, I was like, okay, that's fine. And I remember it, when we had the reading, I actually remember the room that I was in. I was in Norway and I was still unofficially continuing my couch surfing journey. And I was staying in the house uh, or the, rather the apartment of my friend's brother um, in Oslo. And I remember like, because, you know, like, at least the house that I was staying in, they're not, they're not into astrology. I wasn't even like super into astrology myself at the time. So I remember saying like, I really need to go hide in my room in this, like, or rather the living room. Cause I was staying on someone's couch and like close the door to the other rooms and be like, Oh, I have like a very important meeting right now. Please don't disturb. And I'm just listening to just Danielle, like spewing her magic on nodes and Saturn return and like all these concepts that at the time were completely foreign to me. Um, but the, one of the things that became really apparent to me, Danielle, was just like, this lady's not just doing astrology. Like she's clearly very psychic because you were just telling me these things that I, I was like, how do, how do you know? And like, what's going on? Um, but it's, you know, what, what's really fascinating is that there was something you said to me. You literally said, it, this was July, June. And you said on August 24th, it's going to feel like something lifted off your back. And I remember I was working with my coach, Ralph, who act actually had him on the show as my get original guest host. And I was working with him at a time when we were doing tons of shadow work. And that was my introduction to shadow work. And he, on the 23rd, we had a session and it was like, the biggest breakthrough that I had in my work with him. And I was crying and crying and crying. And at the time I had knots all over my shoulders and I was struggling with back spasms. And the next morning I woke up and boom, they were gone. Mm. And, and I had forgotten about your reading, but I referenced it a few weeks later, checked the dates and I was like, oh my God. But anyways, that was just, just a testament to the quality and the beauty of your work. Um, and ever since then, we just, we just became friends and I got to see her in Los Angeles in 2019. And then I just, um, got back from Miami. I was staying in Danielle's house. We were sharing dream space, which was very fun and interesting. Oh my um, God. I kept we're in tapping the same, into you like, so much. <laughs> which mastermind? I don't know how to call it. We're in, the, we're in the same container. And um, I just love you, Danielle. I love your work. I love who you are. Um, I love you as a friend. I love you as a professional, yeah. as a colleague. Um, and I'm just so, so excited to have you on because guys like whoever's listening, you're about to be in for a freaking ride. So thank you so much, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> we've had we've had we've had fun. <laughs> we've had a lot so of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. So one of the things that I want to dive into briefly, but you know, just so those of you listening understand, like what Danielle and I, we were talking, we were chatting before this one. Like, we really want to talk about the process of awakening. And so, but 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 I do believe it's important to for us to briefly cover um astrology because astrology is a concept that from my experience is highly, highly misconstrued. I remember growing up hearing about astrology being like, oh, it's a horoscope. That's so fake. Like, what are you talking about? You can't just predict future from like 12 signs. It's so dumb. And I remember having this really deep conditioning, um, especially growing up in a very Catholic family around this is like, you don't touch astrology. This is not a thing. This is fake, like pseudoscience stuff. And honestly, in my experience, um, in the past five years, and one of them, actually, one of my initiations was with Danielle um, doing my reading, I have had astrologers, quality astrologers all over the world, um, you know, do readings for me. And no matter where in the world they were, they were, or how, quote unquote, you know, popular they were, because I've been had my charts read by like, the astrologers in the middle of Myanmar that were consultants to politicians, but nobody knows about them. They don't have an Instagram or anything like that. And consistently, I have noticed the same patterns being brought up. Consistently, I have noticed that this art and science, there is, there is like validation to it. And I have personally experienced um, how accurate astrology can be and how much it supported me in my own personal awakening and my journey towards coming back to my soul. It's a tool. It's a really potent tool. 
And today I stand here and I'm a complete, like, I really support astrology. I believe in what it does um, and in the support that it gives people. So um, Danielle, would you be able to give us like an astrology? Let's say I'm here. I'm like, eh, I don't know about astrology. What does it really mean? Like, what is astrology to you? And, and what's a simple definition of what it is and what it can do? Yeah. So one of the first things that comes up that I feel like I should share is a lot of people are calling astrology new age, and um, it couldn't actually be further from the truth. Astrology is as ancient as it gets. And um, I didn't know anything about astrology either. When someone first showed it to me, I was like, oh, it's like horoscopes, right? I'm a Taurus sun, right? I didn't know anything beyond that. And then when I began to study it, it just came back to me because I've done this for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. So um, to me, what astrology is, it's a study of the patterns in the sky and how they affect us here down on earth. So you can see and why you probably enjoyed it too, is you can see the behavioral patterns of people. So it's not, I don't do horoscopes. I don't do um, sun sign astrology where like, oh, every month, you know, Taurus, this is going to happen. I, I don't do that stuff. Um, we go deeper into the birth chart and the birth chart is your exact date, time and location. And it pulls up the chart of when you were born and it shows me the, your blueprint. So it's your soul blueprint. Um, it is your energy that you're going to use in this lifetime to live out your karma and your dharma. It is your personality self. And then, you know, there's layers and levels to this. It shows, um, I can see a lot of things on the soul level of stuff you're bringing in, stuff of um, different contracts you have. So it just, it reveals so much, um, but truly it is, you know, it's a study of the cycles and how they affect us. And I always say this, you know, I got into astrology because I had my awakening, which we could talk about in a little bit. And um, this was the beginning. I like to call astrology as like, the joke is like, it's my gateway drug. So it was like the first thing, you know, just to get in there, um, and it opened me up and spirit gave it to me cause I'm super logical as well. And I needed some kind of construct to see like there's mathematical equations. This means this, right? So that was easy for me, but I always like to say, you know, I have a master's degree in interior architecture. I was doing this before I had my awakening. So I'm not doing this because like, oh, I just, there's nothing else in the world for me to do. And like, I had to do this, right? Um, I'm doing this because it's a calling. It's, um, a gift that I have. Um, I continue to learn all the time and also the accuracy. So over and over and over again, again, like I wouldn't continue something if I saw it wasn't accurate, you know, in 2019, specifically, I told people, I told everyone, I still have the video that I said, 2020 is going to be a shit show and the universe is going to get our attention any way we want. And I showed people, um, it was the same energy we were under on World War One, World War Two, 9-11, um, the HIV AIDS pandemic. Um, same energy, right? So when I saw that, you can see the cycles and you can look back. It's called mundane astrology. So you can see the patterns and what happens. Um, one thing I want to add to this, this might be a little advanced, but I think it's also important to say is that astrology doesn't dictate our life. It's like, it's a rhythm. So just like if it's raining outside, um, we have a choice. We can go outside, we can wear a raincoat, we could wear um, our boots, we can play in the rain, or we can think it's horrible, right? So it's the cosmic weather but it's our consciousness and how we're evolving on earth that plays out with the energy. So there's not like, oh, Uranus goes here, Pluto goes here, and this is exactly what's going to happen. We don't know. It depends on our consciousness. So we have control. And so we're evolving. So it goes back to the work that I do is to help humanity evolve. Because the more consciousness we have, the more um, we, we make different decisions. And when we make different decisions, right, we shift certain um the axis of humanity. And so astrology is simply the backdrop and our consciousness with our consciousness, it depends on how we're going to interact with it. So hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cause I want to show so much more than just like, this is going to happen. And then it's doom or gloom. It's, it's not right. about that. And that's what I found as well. Um, it's interesting because this week, just this week I was reading a book um, on pendulums and I'm learning how to, how to douse and you're doing all the things. You're doing all the things. I love it. Time. I'm just learning how to read runes and now pendulums. Yeah. And yeah. it was really interesting. And also, like, it took me aback because I'm also reading a book on Gene Keys. Yes, I know lots of things. I like to learn. 
Right. Um, yeah. And so um, in this book, it was very surprising because they said they put it so gracefully and I'm not going to be able to repeat it as gracefully, but it was something around, you know, he was uh, referring to the I Ching. He was referring to Gene Key's human design astrology. And he said, these are not like the ultimate ways, uh, like they're not like cages. It's not putting you in a cage of like, this is who you are and this is what your future will be. But rather they're just different ways to like split up wholeness into fractiles and just, you know, and every fractile you have the entire universe. And so it's just a different perspective, a different way to perceive um um, it's a map. It's a map that you can use to navigate. But I even, you know, I'm recalling this now, my NLP teacher used to say, uh, the map does not mark the territory. And so mm -hmm. it's a map, but that doesn't mean that everything that you are and everything you will be is encompassed in that map. However, if you've never like navigated these different terrains of your soul before, it's quite helpful to have some kind of guidelines of like, you know, and, and I, I would love for us to also talk about when uh, I just went, I just got out of like an almost three year cycle. That mm -hmm. was just so fucking gnarly. I was in um, yeah. my Pluto cycle mm -hmm. and I remember just, and, and you'll share, but I'll ask you to clarify what a Pluto cycle is in a moment, but I was in this, in this almost three year astrological cycle that is basically like the dark, dark, freaking night of the soul. And I had no idea that I was in it until I was about halfway through it. And I remember I had a friend who I was um, at an event at a party and a friend who's an astrologer, like she just quickly took my information. She said, you know, you're in the middle of your Pluto cycle, right? And I was like, I don't know what that is. What do you mean? What are you talking about? And then she gave me a few bullet points around what the Pluto cycle was. And I'll let you explain it. It's, it's bad. Not bad. Sorry. That's not the word. It's like, it was, it's, it's heavy. It's like deep underworld yeah. energy. And then yeah. I remember messaging Danielle being like, Danielle, what the heck is going on? And the advice you gave me was invaluable because it helped me understand that, yes, I'm in a cycle right now, but I'm not, it's not all doom and gloom. I'm not like nailed to a cross, like having to suffer for the next year and a half. This isn't what it's about. Um, there's actually a huge opportunity for growth. So instead of me saying it, I would love for you to share. I know you don't remember exactly <laughs> what you said, but but what is this a, a Pluto cycle or like cycles in general? Like I know there's a Saturn return, there's Pluto. Um, but if you could just share a bit about what the cycle thingy that I'm talking about is and also yeah. the Pluto, and you're completely welcome and free to speak to, um, I'm an open book with this. So you can speak to my experience and I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember we had lots of voice notes going back and forth. <laughs> and I was like, oh, child, okay, sit down. We have to have a talk here <laughs> because this is this is pretty serious. And, you know, we I kind of knew some stuff you were going through as you were telling me. So basically, I believe um, you had Pluto squaring your son, if I I believe. I, I, I wish I had your chart in front of me right now. But anyways, you're going through Pluto transit. And Pluto is a planet. It was a planet, then it was a dwarf planet, then it wasn't a planet. I like, I, you know, at the end of the day, like whatever, that's astronomy. Um, but astrology, there's a vibration to each planet, we're going to call them. And Pluto packs a punch. Pluto is the most intense planet you could out there. And Pluto goes in and Pluto is deeply connected to your soul path. So not our ego path not you know anything we've been doing but it's aligned with our soul's journey so pluto goes in and when it comes around it starts to pull and grind and rip things out and as i'm saying this you know exactly what i'm talking about i have chills <laughs> so pluto will clear clear the way to the old self to the old behavioral patterns if there was a marriage and it wasn't working if there was a relationship and it's not aligned with where you're going. If there was a job that's not aligned with where you're going, Pluto comes in and takes it out. And now what is very difficult with Pluto, a couple of things, it's so slow moving. So Pluto sits there. It's, it's the furthest planet that we're aware of. I mean, there's a million other planets that we're going to keep you know, learning about, but that we're aware of. And so the orbit is slow and long and wide. So meaning it sits near a planet for a long period of time. It's not like the moon every two and a half days going through a sign. This will sit there, like you said, for about three years off and on, okay, depending on what's going on. 
So Pluto is slow and it begins to pull things out. Now, I am actually currently going through a Pluto transit. So Pluto is opposing my moon. So what you went through, um, the experience, I have been going through this. I'm on, it's now been over a year and I have a, about a year and a half more to go. So again, Pluto is there to get you aligned with your soul. But what if that means that your business needs to completely crumble because it's not, it wasn't meaning that it's bad. It just might not be aligned with where your soul is going. It was more aligned with the ego from before. So that means systems and um, you know people maybe need to leave. What if it means your relationship that you're in was exactly what you needed for the time, but where your soul is going, you two are growing apart. So then it means taking away your relationship. And again, it's slow. It's not like in one day, it, it just happens with Pluto. It's like this buildup and slow. And what's happening is you're, you don't even have to know astrology, but you're feeling Pluto. And what that feels like is a death of yourself. And that's sadness. And that could be loneliness. And that could be anger. You know, just last year, when the first pass when Pluto went around my moon, I was on my knees crying. I just say, universe, I just, I don't know. I don't know about this. Like we've been through this so many times, but this was just getting ripped open. It was about a relationship and it was really painful. And I was like, okay, I, I got to get the lesson here because I, I knew Pluto was there, right? So I'm going to surrender. And that's the other thing I wanted to say. With a Pluto transit, you have to surrender. If you don't surrender, Pluto is going to go in and just rip you open. And so it's a lesson in that of surrender. Can you trust? Do you have faith over fear? Can you trust the universe? Can you trust the past? And the hardest part about Pluto is though it deconstructs, but it doesn't put it back together right now. So we have to sit in this. I don't know what this looks like. There's nothing else there. And this in between. And as humans, we don't like that in between. It's uncomfortable and it's confusing, especially if you're unaware of what Pluto is doing. You're like, you feel like you're losing your mind, right? So we have to sit in that. And then Pluto will always bring back and you move into it, but it takes some time. So mm. right now you're probably feeling completely different than you were before, <laughs> right? Because it, it, it ripped you, it ripped you apart and physically you were going through stuff as well. And that's what happens. Um, it is like, and you had, um, and you said I could openly share, you had like um, a bite or an infection on your leg, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. Huge um, infection in your leg, and there was like pus coming out, and you had to go to the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. Pluto is literally the guts of everything. So it was like, I remember when that was happening, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, this cannot be any more Plutonian. It's literally like the guts coming out and the pus coming out because it's purging old density, right? So it's physically doing it on you as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. I, I might butcher this one, but um, I also remember I have my Scorpio in Pluto. And then not only that, in the ley lines, Bali is something with Bali and Pluto. Mm -hmm. So I was like in Bali having like the ultra Pluto experience. It was, it was so yeah, interesting. I I think I remember you have your moon conjunct Pluto in your natal chart, possibly, uh -huh. yeah. in Scorpio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's that. like literally as intense as it gets. <laughs> so here's the thing. It just amplified that energy as well. So then you had a lot of this Scorpio and Pluto energy. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're so good at storytelling and getting to the heart. I mean, I just hired you for um, Tell Me With My Book because I'm like, I have all these ideas. We got to sort this out. And that's why you're so good because you're like a detective. You know, you go in and you just like, okay, you find what's hidden and that's literally Scorpio energy. So <laughs> I am just, I'm like, like, do all the things. You're just curious about everything. <laughs> I'm a dog. Like, uh, I'm one yeah. of those truffle dogs. I just, I yeah. won't stop till I get the truffle. Want the truffle. You, you definitely will not. No, I know that about you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you're sharing, thank you so much for, for sharing this, Danielle, because I, I believe it's really, really important. And I can speak to my experience um, because, you know, as you were saying, whether you know astrology or not, you will feel it. And yeah. so what I know to be true from my experience is that it wasn't like, oh, somebody told me I had a plute, plute, you know, I was in my Pluto cycle and all of a sudden I created all these things to like make my life miserable, which is also sometimes something that humans do. But it was really this like, I am struggling right now. I feel like I'm in a really dark space in my life and I don't know why. And I don't understand why. I don't get it. And in an yeah. ideal world, a more evolved version of myself would say, oh, I don't need to get it. Let me just go with the flow. But that's not where I was. 
Um, and you know, I find that's a lot okay. of people. Just, and sorry to interrupt you, but that's okay. I want people to know, even if you are evolved, we we like to understand what's going on. So yes, it's one thing to surrender. I mean, it was easier for me to say surrender because I knew Pluto was there, right? Mm -hmm. But if, even if we don't know Pluto's there, it's like we're not just like, okay, my life is getting ripped open. I'm just gonna surrender, sit back, you know, like take a smoke, you know. We we, we want to know what's going on. It's it's yeah. totally normal. Yeah. And so I remember having this feeling that I know is very pervasive. And when a lot of clients come to me, like they have like a, a, a flavor of this feeling of like, oh my God, what is happening? I, I know something's happening. I know it's big, but I don't know what it is. And it hurts. And I don't know how to like what to do about it. And so this was like a very prevalent feeling for myself, which in itself was very humbling because I got like reminded of like, you know, I kind of like lost a little bit of track of, of people coming to me and being like, I don't know what's going on. And I just got like to revisit that feeling in my own system again. And yeah. just remember like when that came through, that information came through for me, I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for like giving me an understanding that it's not about offloading your responsibility to Pluto. And I hate when people do that. Oh, it's Mercury retrograde. Therefore, like I can't show up for my life or, you know, it's, it's, it's Pluto. So for the next year and a half, I got to just do nothing, right? It's not about no. that. It's not about taking my personal responsibility and giving it to a planet because that's victimization. Yeah. But it's about yeah. understanding the context through which you're operating in and understanding that, yeah, you are a speck in the universe. And there's so much more that's happening than than you. And similar to how you can be in a country that's having like some kind of upheaval or, or is having a certain thing that's happening in that country. It's not about you necessarily. You just happen to be part of a system or, you know, in the West, when you're part of these really heavy indoctrination systems, it's like, it's not because, you know, you're, you're this way. It's just because you're in an environment or a system that's setting you up in a certain way. And so mm -hmm. to understand the context of being in this situation was actually um, paradoxically empowering to me. Because yeah. I understood, oh my God, okay, I'm I'm in this place, I'm in a Plutonian phase, and yeah. this is about surrender, and this is about um, you know letting an old part of me die, and this is about welcoming in a new chapter of my life that's really going to be much more soul aligned than than I've ever been. And so mm -hmm. me mentally understanding that doesn't mean that I took a broom and like I wasn't suffering because I went through a really painful breakup. It was horrible. And at the same time that I was going through that breakup, um, as Danielle mentioned, I had a massive leg, in, three leg infections on one leg that actually yeah. left me without walking for a month. So I was like not walking. I was going through a breakup at the same time. Um, I My team was just completely dysfunctional. I've since then replaced yeah. every single member. Um, my business model was just suffocating me. I wasn't taking any vacation. I didn't have enough time and space for myself. Since then, I now implemented a three months a year rule in my mm -hmm. business where I take three months off. So there was all these pieces that were basically like, it, it felt like a tight sweater. It felt like I was getting caged by my own belief systems. And the only way that these things were going to unravel was if there's a lot of pressure was applied because unfortunately, in that point of my life, like I was... I knew I needed to break up with my former partner months before I did it. Like I, I knew, but I didn't want to do it. And I knew that I needed to like take care of my health in a different way. And I wasn't doing it. And I knew I needed to make shifts in my business. And I wasn't doing it because I was scared because I was complacent because I was comfortable. And I needed that massive pressure to come through and um, and pop some things open. And it was a, it was a gift. I couldn't see that back then. Um, and I'm going to admit something, Danielle, you told me to surrender. I definitely didn't. I was like, nope. No, I know. We were like, <laughs> we were like fighting about that. I'm like, okay, so let's define surrender. Cause I'm like, it's not happening. <laughs> you were fighting me on it. I was like, no, like, this is what needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it was a really humbling experience because again, it's like, if, if everything in life is happening for you. And looking back now, me being in that dialogue with you is so familiar because I, I've had since then had to have this dialogue with so many of my clients and how yeah. can I be like, Hey, you're not surrendering. If I myself not don't go through the experience of not surrendering and noticing that it's actually more painful. So yeah. I, Pluto like taught me how to surrender. You Cause know, I remember there was a, you know, I was like, okay, I give up. I, I'm done. Like I can't just yeah, and I told you. And I'm like, that's actually where you need to be. Like, I remember mm -hmm. these conversations now I'm like, you need to be there. And I was mm -hmm. like, you need to let your business stuff just go. Like it's mm -hmm. not 
aligned. And it's not you know, not that your business wasn't aligned, but maybe just mm-hmm. like how things were set Components up. Components of it, spectrums of yeah. it was not. And yeah. I was holding on for dear life. And yeah. the moment that it took me months, I was just fighting through it. Okay, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it happen. Er, like trying to bulldoze. And then yeah. I got to the point where I was like, I just need to, to let it be. I need to let it go. And it's painful and it's embarrassing and it's all these things. But I remember this massive like wave of release when I just said, I'm going to let it go. But I needed to go through the experience of not letting it go to understand the value of letting it go. And so, you know, in and of itself, there's these phases that we have in our life. And what I really want to highlight here is that astrology helps set the context Please don't blame it on the planet. It's not Pluto's fault. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like it's actually if if everything is happening for you and not to you, then that means that this is happening for you. So instead, like my reframe was, how is this happening for me? And then things started to fall apart in my life. And what Pluto taught me was, okay, this is falling apart. I'm in a Pluto season right now. This is definitely happening for me. So let me just find reframe to find out how this is to my benefit. And it actually taught me to look at life completely different. I've, I've always been somebody who looked at the silver lining, but this was another level of, okay, yeah. I'm suffering, right? Like it's, it's hurting. But one of the things I know to be true is that if I'm suffering, I'm creating it. There's pain and then there's suffering. So how do I let go of the suffering and just be in my pain? So it's, it taught me to be in my pain. It expanded my capacity to hold my own pain, which as we know, expands our capacity to also hold more joy. It taught me how to let go and surrender even when it's completely uncomfortable. It taught me how to sit in the void, that space in between where like this is ending and I have no guarantee that anything else is going to begin. So I just need to sit in this and be okay with myself in this space. And it put me towards a path of self-love, which to be honest, I'm still walking, of valuing myself, of not compromising myself, of taking care, like deep, deep care of myself, which is one of the reasons why I believe I'm on such a deep, path like towards respecting my body and and my gut health and like my health um it just took me on this really beautiful journey it wasn't fun but it happened and i'm really grateful for it so with all that being said um one of the things that this really reminds me of that you were sharing as well in the beginning was this this topic of awakening and i know like i can share danielle with you when i hear your story like almost every time i get goosebumps because the way I feel very, I feel very privileged and very grateful that when I went through my awakening, I had some incredible like mentors, like just holding yep. me down and just friends like such as yourself, like even having you always having my back when I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I feel like I'm starting to spiral. It, it's been such a privilege and such a gift. And this is one of the reasons why I so strongly believe in mentorship just that importance of having like you're going through a really big initiation and having that um, being held for you. And one of the things that I so deeply, you know, admire about you is that I know you went through this entire process on your own. Like it was you in spirit. It wasn't like a teacher. There wasn't a guy that wasn't like an astrologer friend that you could just call. Um, And I know that there's some people listening that might also feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going through this whole this huge transition and I don't actually know what to do with myself and so I would love if you could share um well first of all what is awakening because we're we're throwing this word around but not everybody might actually like be clear on what awakening is and if you could also share a bit about your story like through your awakening journey um but also like anyone who's listening that's like going through an awakening like what how do they know what's happening First of all, like, how do you know? Like, this is this is what it is, and what 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 to do to perhaps um, shortcut the process? Not shortcut, but you know what I mean. Like, collapse timeline, accelerate a little bit. So, the struggle can't necessarily always be avoided, but um, but it does. There are definitely things that can be done. I believe. Yes. So, awakening um, to me that means the program self dies. And our true self begins to emerge. So like I said, and going back to the beginning, since birth, or I said this maybe on a live that I was on before, since birth we're programmed, whether it's, you know, family, society, um, just different, um, you know, ancestral lineage uh, we're carrying on. We are programmed. We are not our true authentic self. We're, you know, we 
we're born that and then the layers come on and then we think we need to act a certain way and then we're like, I'm this, I'm that. And all these would become labels. They're not our true authentic self. So the awakening process is the return to self, is coming home. And so that sounds beautiful and amazing, but what needs to happen is the density in your field needs to be purged out so that more light can come in and more light is consciousness. And so that's happening. Um, you know, this has been happening. This is on earth all the time. You come here, we're just, we're evolving. Um, but especially since um, 2012 and 2020, it's escalated. So since 2020, we can see it on a global scale of this massive awakening. So when 2020 happened, I was like, wow, okay, got it. No, I, un I understood why I went through my journey when I did, because when everyone was freaking out and I, I get it, like there we know, no, at, in the beginning, nobody knew what was going on, but people kept saying, how are you calm? How are you calm? And I'm like, first of all, I can see through this monkey circus right now. Second of all, um, when I've gone through my awakening, I understood the assignment. Basically, I understood I was prepared for this because what was happening, it was a massive, like it was basically a massive ayahuasca ceremony that people didn't even know they signed up for. And that's what was happening, right? So imagine that going to drinking, you think you're drinking a uh, Kool-Aid and you're drinking ayahuasca, right? You can only imagine. So that's what happened on a global level. My journey is actually very interesting. Um, just a little note, I go in detail. It's two episodes on Cosmic Body Podcast, my, my podcast. Um, so I'm gonna give you the very, very abbreviated version. Um, I was 29 years old, living in Boston, um, just got my degree in interior architecture. So my master's in interior architecture. I was working for one of the top architecture firms in the world. It was like an amazing job, um, but I was miserable. I was just like, I would come home every day crying. I was sitting there doing blueprints. I was working with like the HVAC, you know, the, the air conditioning, the, the plumbers, electricians. I was just like, mm, this is not, this is not it. And I don't know what it was, but it wasn't it. I just kept saying I need to help people. But at that point, no idea what to do. So I was turning 30. And at the time I was living with my boyfriend and we decided to go to France for my birthday. So I have two weeks off of work. I'm so excited. Oh my God, you know, the job that I don't like. And my boyfriend at the time starts acting super weird. Right when we get on the plane, I'm like, oh my God, is he going to propose? Like, I don't know what's happening. And um, long story short, he just got so weird at things, you know, kind of blew up and um he dumped me on my birthday on my 30th birthday at this restaurant which I couldn't wait to go to because it was designed by Philippe Stark this designer that I wanted to that I loved and I'm so happy to be there and I get dumped on my 30th birthday so that was shitty I'll go in more detail right on my podcast and I came back to Boston and I didn't know at the time but I got this download I remember going for a walk because I was just like so upset and I went for a walk and I get this download. It was very clear it's time to move back to California. And that's where I was from. Um, but then I didn't know it was a download. It was just like something just led me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to move back to California. So I quit my job. The whole architecture firm was like, oh, which firm are you going to? And I'm like, oh, nowhere. I don't know what I'm doing. And at this time, this was 2009. This was like shocking. Shocking. What do you mean? You don't know what you're doing. And you don't know what you're, you're working at one of the top firms and you're, you're not going anywhere else? No. So I go back to California. I move in with my parents, who I haven't lived with since I was 18, did not have the best relationship. In hindsight, I understand that we had to heal a lot on the journey. So I move in. I'm now broke. The economy crashes. So there are no design jobs because everyone that's architect or designer is getting laid off, like real estate bust, right? The whole thing. So that was that, that um, little depression we had. Um, recession, I should say. And um, so now I'm 30 years old at my parents' house crying, broke, and, you know, asking if I could borrow their car, right? So like, this was not how I saw it going. And I would say, I don't, I, you know, maybe a week, a month, I, I, this was 15 years ago now at this point, so I don't remember everything. But um, a little bit after that, it started with dreams. I just had, we've all had intense dreams, right? You feel something and you wake up and you're like, whoa, that was intense, right? Well, so I had this dream, super intense. It took me hours to kind of snap out of it. I was crying. It was just like so profound. And um, then I had more dreams that would show me stuff. And then I would see it during the day. And I'm like, wait a minute, that was weird. I remember in my dream last night, I just saw that. 
And this is this point, I have no idea of anything outside this 3D realm, no clue of anything. And I'm like, this kind of feels like the twilight zone, right? There's, I was just like, there was no other word for it. I'm like, this is like the twilight zone. And then that kept happening. And then one morning or one night, I woke up in the middle of the night. I felt something in front of me. And I wake up and I see a spirit and a spirit staring at me. And at this point, I'm awake. I'm like aware I'm awake. And I'm like, holy shit, like what the hell is that, right? And I like, scream because I do not grow up seeing spirits. I mean, you hear a lot of medium stuff. They, they're like, oh yeah, I grew up seeing spirits. I, there were moments when I was younger, but I shut it down because I was so scared. And it was subconscious, so I didn't know. So I didn't know anything. So I see this spirit. It looks like an ascended master. I didn't know that word at the time, but now I know. And um, I was so scared. It wasn't doing anything to me, but I was just scared because it was a program. Like, oh my God, we see ghosts. Like something's wrong with me. I'm going crazy. So I did not sleep with my lights off for two weeks. I was terrified. And in that two weeks, spirit was communicating with me. So, that, well, spirit's always communicating with us, I should say, but it was it became more real, but again, I didn't know spirit was communicating with me, but they were guiding me. So in hindsight, I could say that. So they were impressing into my thought patterns because that's how, I mean, it works too. Smell, touch, you know, all the senses. But they were impressing this into me of do not be scared because if you're scared, you're going to bring in lower density or lower frequency, right? Whatever the word they use that I was aware of at the time. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm thinking in my head, but like I'm getting this, I just felt like it was me getting the information, not knowing it was spirit. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can't be scared, but there's a ghost there, but I can't be scared because I'm going to attract more of that. And I just was told I have to push through. So I did, I pushed through, I waited two weeks, you know, I subbed my lights off and then the awakening just got more. I was guided to meditate. I've never meditated before in my life. Again, this is 2009. I had no idea. There wasn't like, a, everyone was like a life coach, spiritual teacher. Like, thank God we have this options now. It wasn't like that. Like, I literally was like, like, I did not know where to go. I was like, something is happening to me, right? Um, but I knew, this is the important part with this, that I want people to know. Even though I had no idea what was happening, something in my body and my cell and my heart felt right and I felt this moment of, or moments of joy that I haven't felt my entire life. Because for 30 years, I hated every job I've ever had. I thought there was something wrong with me. You know, I'm like, maybe I'm just going to be miserable. Like, maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't like all these jobs. But I was like, no, there's something else. And for the first time in my life, it was like, I felt my soul. I mean, that now I can say that, but at the time I didn't know, but I felt my soul. I was connected to my soul. I was locked and loaded. And then that became the journey. So I started meditating. I would go so deep in meditation, I would have to set my alarm because it would be over an hour. If I didn't set my alarm, I would just be in another realm. I started getting information. I remember there was, I used to meditate in front of a mirror and I would open my eyes, I would see my aura and I would start to ask questions and then clairvoyantly, I, they would show me the answers. So they, they would show me, I would see things in front of my face and this is no plant medicine, this is no drugs, this is totally sober. And so it's really important people to know that we have this ability we have this like access to this and so this became this journey and so once I started realizing oh my god there's something here and there's something going on and I was just guided so spirit was my first teacher I eventually started I found someone I don't even know how through somebody else um that helped me and she was amazing one of my first teachers and I just you know I remember all the questions you used to ask me I was like uh I get it because I used to ask her the same questions. <laughs> I had the same questions because it was like, I'm very much like you. Like, okay, just give me, tell me what to do. Write it down and I'll do it. And I was like, doesn't work that way. Like it doesn't work that way. So I began this journey of the old Danielle was dying, really. And that meant the density, the behavioral patterns, the personality self, the programs, the fear, everything I took on. And for me, it was a very big six-year journey for me. I was in spiritual boot camp. So when I tell people, when they're like, oh my God, you're not married yet, what were we doing? I'm like, oh my God, my 30s, I was getting ripped open. So imagine a Pluto cycle, but for like six years straight. And then it was just went on to something else because a couple of years after that, I ended up getting Lyme. And I'm now six years out of dealing with my health. So one awakening after another, that's mm -hmm. just the journey. So that's the process. I found astrology through someone. My soul recognized this. I was like, wait a minute. Like this, it just, it was a language that I knew. I don't speak languages. They're very hard for me actually, but this was a language of the soul. It's archetypal language. 
and um, language of the stars that I just knew. And I studied it very hard, but it all came back to me. And I ended up doing astrology in the beginning because I was like, well, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm 30 years old living with my parents, broke, crying over my relationship. And I have no idea which end is up. And I don't know what to do with my life. So I started astrology because I'm like, well, maybe this can tell me something. And I was like, oh, that's why I'm like this. <gasps> that's why I'm sensitive. That's why I'm feisty, right? Like, and I started understanding myself. And then I got this idea of like, wow, I think I could help people. And then it slowly morphed into, so it was astrology for years, but with that, my psychic abilities and, you know, tapping in, and then it became consciousness and this journey of awakening and soul. And now, I mean, I don't even know what I do. I like everyone wants a title and everyone wants to define it, but I work so much with the other realm is I help people connect back to their soul. I help people connect, connect back to their heart awaken their consciousness, right? Helping humanity understand the multidimensionality of who they are, right? You tell me things and you're like, this is so weird. I'm like, is it? No, this is, it's actually weird that we don't do these things. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's the long, short, long, short, you know, <laughs> it's everything of the story. Um, but once I had my awakening, you just can't go back to your old self. And then, you know, it's been one awakening after the other and we'll, we'll have many throughout life. And 2020, there was a deeper one for me because, you know, we, we won't get into it, but like, I just never really looked into medicine in that way or um, the government. And then all of a sudden they pulled back the curtain and then I saw a bunch of things that I never wanted to see in my life before. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you understand more about the matrix, more about what's going on. And then it's actually all connected. It's really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of goodness that you just shared and a few things that I would love to highlight. Um, they, well, from what you shared is the first one being this concept of remembrance. Um, and it's really interesting because I have a similar feeling when it comes to neuroscience and quantum physics. I'm like, you know, I went to school for communication and I've always been like a very creative artistic you know, or at least that's how I identified myself. And then when I started getting into, um, you know, quantum physics, the, you know, the most famous one being Joe Dispenza, but different, there's many, many different people that are doing this and they're explaining the brain and they're explaining how the brain works. I'm like, I get it. I get everything. Like I remember doing a course on quantum physics and it was like, I had it on 2X and I remember thinking like, go faster. I'm getting all these concepts. And um, I remember at, at the state, the next week I took a course on like investing and, and I had to put it on like 0.8 because I was just like, Oh my God, could somebody explain to me what a bear market is? I still don't get it. Rewind, yeah. you know, and you know, the, the speed and I know, I know this to be true. It, it's funny. Cause I had a client, I remember a client specifically who came to me and she wanted to like be a known coach. And by the time we ended up working together, uh, by the end of our sixth container, she's like, I have no desire to be a coach. I actually, and I'm meant to be an interior designer. And uh -huh. like, you know, two years later, she's a very successful interior designer uh -huh. and she's like, oh my God, I love it. This is what was always in my soul. But it, it really illustrates what you're talking about is that we, I believe that we have in our souls, like when we're choosing to come into this, this, this 3D realm is like, we have this, this series of gifts and purposes and things that we actually like came here to experience. And that density that you're speaking of is really what I refer to as all of the conditioning, societal, environmental, cultural, familial conditioning that makes us basically become these personalities. Um, I think you would refer to it. There was another word you referred to it. Persona. Personas. Yeah. Personas, mm -hmm. personalities where we start to become this version of ourselves that we aren't actually based on what our parents believed. Oh, like in my culture, this is how people treat money. So that's how I'm going to treat money. Um, yeah. This is how my parents like interact with each other and call it love. So that's what love is. Mm -hmm. Like, this is yep. how, you know, people treat each other in my community. Therefore, this is the standard for how to treat another person in community. And so we start to adapt all these belief systems and behavioral patterns based on what's around us rather than what our our ultimate truth is. And that's that like uncomfortable feeling. I went through this in 2016 when I was working my corporate job in New York City, which I talk more, the whole story is in episode um, one and two of this podcast. But, um, but I remember just, just, just being in this place where I'm uncomfortable, I'm uncomfortable and so uncomfortable. And it's, it's like, I didn't get it then why I was uncomfortable. I get it now, which is that I was basically awakening 
to the fact that I had all these belief systems that I was carrying that weren't actually in alignment to my soul essence and who I really was. And when I would go into corporate and I would watch a person like snap at someone else because of this stupid assignment that doesn't actually matter. I remember like thinking to myself, well, this isn't even, we're just marketing like an insurance, like we're just marketing a tax preparation service to a bunch of people. Like, why is this such a big deal? And not understanding and something else that you shared, Danielle, that I think is really important is that there was all this, this terminology, like ascended masters, like 3D, um, you know, spiritual gifts. There's this, there's this lexicon um, that when you are in your process of awakening, and you see a freaking spirit in your room, you're not like, oh my God, that's an ascended master. Like, let me meditate. Let me pause, meditate and like reflect on this because I'm vibrating at a low frequency. If I'm in fear, right? You know, you're like, what the hell is that thing? Oh my God, I'm terrified. And so for those of you who are feeling this like uncomfortable feeling in your body, like, oh my God, like I I resonate with this. I resonate with what Selena and Danielle are saying. Just, Just know that. Um, like when I chose to travel the world, like leave everything behind to travel the world and sleep in the homes of strangers, I wasn't like, oh, well, I'm going through my spiritual awakening. So I need to like do something really different and I need to like sit through the void. Um, and then hopefully, you know, in that void, something more beautiful will be reborn. No, I was like, oh my God, this is the scariest decision of my life. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I don't know who to ask for help, but I know in my gut, like I just feel it in my gut, in my heart, like every being fiber of my being is saying that I need to leave the city. It's not good for me. And I need to like throw myself into this new experience because whatever this experience is, it's going to lead the way. And I just have to trust that. Like it was a different texture. Um, It was a different feeling. It was this, I'm going to just take a step forward because I'm being led to do it. And yeah. I'm going to jump into the abyss. And I, and I, I just have to trust that I'm going to be caught that like it's going to be okay and so that's like the biggest initiation but as Danielle said there's waves right like that first wave was really clunky and uncomfortable and I didn't know anything I didn't understand what was happening and I just kind of like felt like I was flying by the seat of my pants just clunking around the entire time trying to just like find some like semblance of light in in this cave of shadows And, but the thing is that as you're going through, because I remember one of the questions I asked myself when I realized, like when I got to the place where I was like, wait, I think I just went through my awakening. And then someone was like, I don't even know if it was you, but somebody said, oh, there's plenty more to come. And I'm like, oh, oh no, I'm, I don't want to do this. And I remember like resisting my own path, like resisting my spiritual path, being Mm -hmm. like, I'm not getting on this la la la. I'm going to keep working and being like, a business person, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. You're just going to hold on to it even more. I'm chucked in. And yeah. every time it's felt, it's, it was aggressive. It was like really violent yeah. sometimes. And it mm-hmm. started, things started to shift. Actually, it really helped. Pluto really helped me with this, which is yeah. it, it started to shift when I said, okay, if I'm on this path, like I'm, no matter how much I try to like leave this path, I'm like committed to the path of my heart and my soul. Like it's just, yeah, it's just done. Like it's done. So stop trying to pretend. Like, like are you oh, done? Let's go with you. Just sign the contract. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a hundred percent in. I'm just pretending like I have doubts. Like I, it's not actually. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in. And so yeah. when I just said I'm gonna commit to this like full on, what I started to notice is that the challenges didn't get easier per se, but who I was navigating the challenges got better. And it got more easeful, like with this Pluto thing. I remember, I don't remember if I share this with you, Danielle, but I remember this visceral feeling of I'm on a roller coaster ride. And for the first time in my life, I'm opening my eyes. Like I'm not like clenching. Well, you well, are opening your eyes because you're, it's a new reality. So you're, because we just get used to this 3D world in front of us, this program. And now you're seeing beyond the matrix. You're seeing beyond the veil. So you were opening mm-hmm. your eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's that and you're feeling of opening the eyes and actually being like, this is another wave and I'm here to write it. And it gets to be, you know, you can, you get to ask like, Hey, can this be as graceful as it can be? It's not always like, you're not always going to get that. No, not- I've been asking <laughs> with Pluto when I'm going through, I was feeling there was a lot of stuff and I would ask for grace and I would um, understand the assignment, understand the lesson. And I would allow myself to be in it. And I would ask to please, just please soften, please, please. Like, you know, um, mm-hmm. because we we can alter things. It's really important mm-hmm. to ask for help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's yeah. interesting because I, I just did a human design reading with a dear friend of mine and something he shared with me 
was really meaningful around my life purpose. Um, he does human design on Gene Keys, so it was a bit of a mix. And oh, so um, he looked at my life purpose and he's like, you're actually here to go through these like big lessons and to make sense of them and then to be able to translate them for other people. And so that gave me this beautiful context of, okay, like when I'm, when I'm in a challenge, yes, there's pain and discomfort and all those things, but I can choose who I get to be in that. Do, am I going to play the victim and blame other people and be mad all the time and not process my own emotions and just like loop my belief systems? Yeah. Or am I going to choose like, actually, I don't know what's going on. I don't have the full picture yet, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to show up for myself. I'm going to be with my emotions. I'm going to ask for help when I need it. Like, it's just a different way of navigating these waves yeah. of awakening and knowing that even, you know, you were talking about health that I'm going through a huge, you know, I'm a huge sugar junkie. You knew, you know this about me. And I have oh, been talking about this. Know. I've tried to get you off this for a while. Look I was like, here. it's coming. You know, it's coming. Wow. You're not going to be able to do this soon. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just like, you know, I didn't listen for a year. And sometimes we got to not listen for a year. Oh, until the thing we all happens, do it on right? our own time, our own like journey. On our own time, on our own rhythm. But finally, I chose to listen. And like, now my God's like talking to me. And it's just like all these mm -hmm. things are unraveling around the importance of treating our physical bodies and, and these vessels to be able to hold like the higher frequencies, the more we awaken into our soul. Um, but what you're sharing, Danielle, like one of the things that what I, what I love about our past together um, as friends and as colleagues is that, you know, when you say like, I take people back to their soul, I feel like I do that, that as well, but it's a com the expression of that is completely like my expression and your expression of that is completely your expression. And so in our own expressions, we are in a space of like being in alignment and following our soul's calling and helping a lot of people along the way. But the way that it manifests is delicious. Like to like, I wouldn't want to do what you're doing and maybe you don't want to be doing what I'm doing, but what I'm doing excites me and lights me up. What you're doing yeah. excites you and lights you up. But it's really comes back to that same thing, which is coming back to your soul and awakening and awakening and allowing like the life that we've chosen to unfold for itself because we are meant I truly believe that we're meant to be in joy and peace and harmony and love. Like we're here for love. I even get goosebumps as really? I'm saying that. Yeah. And so it's the the journey back to our soul does include some dark nights of the souls, some really highlights, you know, but that's duality. It's like you have the shadow, you have the light. Um, so you can't per se escape it and nor would life be fun if there was no contrast. But what you can choose is who you're going to be as you're navigating through this journey so yeah beautiful <laughs> beautiful so i feel like as i said i was like this is coming to a completion but before uh before you do i'd love to um you know for anyone who's listening now that we 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 have we know the arc of today's episode because we were both like we don't know what we we're going to come out of us today um mm -hmm. but now that we've shared what we shared like for someone who's listening in and they're like whoa, okay, like I got to, yep, I feel uncomfortable. Yep, feeling the scumper. Yep, I'm in the void. And I want to like keep continuing this return to my soul. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to come back to the path now. Um, to this person, what would you share? Um, to this person in sense of if they don't want to keep going through. Can you re repeat the question yeah, again? I want to make sure I understand so it. I'm tuning into the energetics of like, the person who might who would have made it to the end of this episode today and yeah. what i'm feeling into is okay so i'm in a space i'm pretty uncomfortable right now in my life um feeling a little stuck definitely feeling like the tight sweater right now yeah. and i also know that in my heart that i am committed to walking the path of my soul like i know that i'm committed to this i know this is important to me but i've just listened to this podcast and i'm like okay this all feels true to me and this is all things that I want to do, but what, what next? Like, what can I go off and be or do next? Like, where can I take this once I exit? What are some well, things I think, to think about or contemplate? Yeah. So thank you for, I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page here. I think the biggest thing you said is what can you do? And the most important thing is to actually at that point not do anything but to become and be because we're so do 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 go 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 and when you work in this other realm 
And when you're going through an awakening, it's a shift in consciousness, which is not something tangible, which is vib vibratory, right? It's frequency. So the most important thing that I tell people that I did on my journey is I listened. Because all day long, we're getting information. We're getting direction. We're getting what to do. We just have to be quiet enough to hear it. And it's going to sound like our own voice. It's going to sound like our own thoughts, but we're guided. It's like, maybe go here, do this, read this book, call this person, right? We're just, there's little nudges along the way and ask, ask for guidance, ask for help. But if you're like asking, you're like, okay, where is it? Where is it? Right? Like you're still in your logical and you're still in the control. So we need to drop into the embodiment of it and listen and then move from that space from our heart. So it's a different frequency. Mm. It's a very different frequency. Exactly why you were struggling with the Pluto because you were like ha ah, fighting it, right? Exactly why I was struggling in the beginning. I told that healer I was working with, okay, just give me the five things to do and I'll knock them off the list. And it's like, that doesn't really work that way. It's 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 energetic. It's frequency. It's not just like go paint the house, mow the lawn, right? That that's not that's three D. We're not dealing in the same realm. So I think that's the biggest thing that people understand is there needs to be a shift in consciousness and a shift in awareness of you processing your emotions mm -hmm. from a different place, not from the logical mind doing 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 going 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 achieving achieving showing your new Mercedes showing your new this. I mean do do whatever you want to do. That's not the place where you're changing from. Mm -hmm. Have your Mercedes and also go through your awakening. <laughs> <laughs> I like both. That was a very Torian thing to say. Both, please. <laughs> I don't know where, where, where mine, which sign of mine this would be, but I'm like, I want the bag and the awakening. You like nice things. You're a Libra, right? Libra okay. sign? Yeah. That is, yeah. yeah. So Libra, Libra sun is ruled by Venus. Same with Taurus. And so... Your aesthetic and your design is very important to you. Libras oh. love beautiful things. Like I your, I can't, like your partner, like definitely is always going to be good looking. It just is a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Like you're a Libra. Like it just is a thing. You're just like, they need to be aesthetically pleasing. And oh. also Libras are all beautiful. Like I've never seen a Libra that I'm like, whoa, no. Like you, Libras are beautiful. So just because it's literally ruled by like beauty. And here I was always thinking that it's because I grew up in Rome and I'm just surrounded by statues of Greek gods. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, man, maybe that has an influence as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been conditioned, but do I really want to decondition this? I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe, I'll keep keep these these maybe I'll keep this one. Maybe I'll keep this one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But be beautifully said. Thank you so much, Danielle, for, for your You're wisdom welcome. and your humor and your grace. I did love you so much. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. You make me you make me smile, you make me laugh, and it's fun. Like I feel like I was you, you know, and that's why like when you go through this stuff, I'm like, uh, I get like I gave you some tough love at my house, you know, but mm -hmm. like it was because like I felt you. Mm -hmm. And I've been in exactly your shoes. That's why I'm like, just if you're open to this, like you know, like I just I get it. Yeah. And as long as it's delivered with love, sometimes yeah. a nice little kick in the pants can. Be we all need it. We all need it. I get plenty of kicks in the arm, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like extremely stubborn, so um, sometimes, like, yeah, you with the sugar, you're like, it's gotta go, it's gotta go. I'm like, yeah, la 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 la, cake, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, you're gonna get to a point when your just frequency is not even the match with this anymore, and you're like. Okay, well, I have sugar all day long. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Forever a student of life. Oh, my. Well, we all are. <laughs> Every day I'm learning. I mean, the things I know now, like even three years ago, no idea. And in three years, it's going to be even more, you know? So it's just, I, we learn every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know we could keep going, but let's, uh, for the grace of the people listening, let's, let's close today's episode. We are ending on a high note. Um, so Danielle, for people who want to learn more about you, they want to find you. Can you share more where they can go ahead and do that? Yes. You can go to my Instagram at I am Danielle page, P-A-I-G-E, or my website at daniellepage.com. Beautiful. Everything is there. Link in my bio. Um, I'm the one with the blue check mark now, so I won't be DMing you. Those are, that's not me. <laughs> no. There will be no free readings. 
<laughs> no free reading. Yeah. But seriously, check out her Instagram. Um, she is phenomenal. And I, I just love it. Her lives, her everything you post, it's just, it makes me giggle. It makes me cry. It, it's, it it's, me they're really pure transmission. So if you're not following her yeah. already, um, please go ahead and do so. And if there's anything that really struck you from today's episode, the invitation is screenshot it, tag us both and let us know. We'd love to hear. I would love to hear. Please do. That's so fun. I love that idea. It's very fun. Okay, Danielle. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you. Love you. (laughs) Thank you, beautiful humans, for tuning in to today's episode of It's Not What You Think. If you loved what you received today, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps us reach even more amazing listeners like you. If we aren't already connected on social media, Come receive even more tips and inspiration by following me on Instagram at Celine DaCosta or visiting my website at CelineDaCosta.com. After listening to this episode, I invite you to take a few moments to reflect. What stood out to you? What were your key takeaways or breakthroughs? And if there was one action step you could take from this, what would it be? Thank you again for joining me on this journey. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect in the next episode. Until then, keep sharing your unique gifts and living out your most magical life.